The government of Nigeria said that in 2021, about $4 billion was lost to crude oil theft, which is about 400,000 barrels per day. In the minds of many people, it will seem like there's a lot of health as care to move these 400,000 barrels every day. But to be sure, in the Niger Delta, there is no health as care Kitty Kata, or Kakafoni, or Higi Haga in the movement of these 400,000 barrels per day. I can tell you that 40 times, on average, 40 times in a year, all the government officials, security agencies, and oil industry experts go to sleep. This is catchment of resources. Here we do everything extra. We are going to do an analysis and a dissection because I have my tools here to perform a surgery on the available evidence in the public space of how crude oil theft happens in the Niger Delta. A lot of people are now running elder scatter because they know that there is nothing in this country concerning the River Rhine that I don't know. He's not done yet. He makes this weighty allegation. When you are coming from Wari, you see security as boot all over the places. If you look at the old setting, where this illegal bunkering is taking place, if you have one uh, Navy gunboat, one army gunboat, the extreme end is where the real bunkering is taking place. According to government officials, 400,000 barrels of crude oil is being stolen every day. That's estimated to be about $40 million per day. And in 2021, they estimate about $4 billion was lost to crude oil theft. So when we think of these figures, most times we begin to think of companies running health task health with their ships trying to move 400,000 barrels every day and not to be caught. You cannot imagine making $4 billion without running Helta Skelta or Kitty Kata, as people will say. But in the real sense, this crude oil is being stolen every 8 to 10 days by all the different parties involved. We are going to be dissecting here oil theft in Nigeria based on our evidence, and we will call them Exhibit 1, Exhibit 2, and Exhibit 3. We are going to be looking at these three exhibits and we will emphasize the information that makes them valid as evidence. Exhibit 1 is a comment made by experts in the Chatham House, where in 2014 they spoke about how oil theft is organized crime and is coordinated by politicians, military officers, militants, oil industry personnel, oil traders and communities. You can take this statement to the bank and it is verifiable and nobody has challenged it till today. So there is no defamation of character in this statement. Exhibit 2. In Exhibit 2, you see how the Navy says it has handed over 70 vessels out of 127 caught in illegal bunkering. I want you to take this number of vessels reported by the Navy to be the value of those locally refined or the locally stolen crude oil that is done by individual communities. I'd like you to take this number of vessels provided by the Navy to represent about 40,000 barrels, which is amongst the ones locally refined and stolen by individuals in the Niger Delta. Out of these 400,000 barrels per day, 40,000 barrels per day goes to local refining as well as local theft by individual groups. The remaining 360,000 barrels per day goes to the organized crime group. So I want you to take this local part of these 400,000 barrels, which is 40,000 barrels, and apportion it to what the Navy has reported as 127 vessels. You can take this to the bank. Let's move further to Exhibit 3. Exhibit 3 contains a lot of information and is the big fish in this our dissecting of oil theft in the Niger Delta. But we'll be focusing on just one sentence in this exhibit, which is that the super tanker recently discovered had the capacity 
for 3 million liters of crude oil. This 3 million liters is very important because it's from here you'll be able to understand that it's between 8 to 10 days that oil theft of 360,000 barrels per day occurs in the Niger Delta. It goes without saying that for you to move $4 billion, several people and experts need to be involved. But people who see the movement of cash in this space are making this kind of comments, that is, the Chatham House. They may not be able to pinpoint one person who does it, but you see a lot of cash moving hands. And you know if crude oil is moving from one place to another, someone is buying it and someone is refining it. So definitely there is movement and there is no way it can occur without experts involved. But you cannot begin to harass people and commit state resources into investigating people without solid evidence. So this point of all the people involved should be taken to the bank as being a valid reason for why there is serious oil theft in the Niger Delta. This Exhibit 2 is quite clear because you can see vessels being handed over to the EFCC and you can always go and check for the record whether this has happened or not. So definitely this is actually happening for the local people who are moving this to the high sea in order to feed other ships that are waiting for them to receive this product. Exhibit 3 is where everything makes sense. For the Navy to make a comment that a ship came into our waters without papers, without identification, and they were able to escape, you begin to wonder how it's possible for a ship to escape an helicopter. I know we may say the ship might move at night and the helicopters may not, we may have many reasons, but this is a dangerous statement or dangerous statements because you are kind of sweeping all the credible intelligence under the carpet. And for this kind of ship to be discovered and no heads are rolling, so when the ship comes in and it left, or which terminal supply this ship with product, you are not hearing those kind of information in the news. That is what the news is supposed to be telling us. They are supposed to be investigating to find out which terminal supplied that ship with crude oil before it left the aqua field and was finally accosted in Equatorial Guinea. There is so much information to unpack in this paragraph, but we are not talking about all of this. We just sweep so much of information under the carpet. It's almost like people are not interested. 3 million liters of crude oil is valued at about $300 million or $60 million depending on the price of crude oil per barrel. This amount is too big for heads not to roll. This amount is too big for people not to be talking about it. This amount is too big for people not to be bringing out documentation for the transactions that happened in the Nanja Delta. And recently in the news, a pipe was discovered connected to a crude oil trunk line and it's through that point that some crude oil is also stolen from the country where it is connected to sort of like a minor terminal and ships come there and take product. If people were doing their jobs, which we are going to go over in the solution, if people were doing their jobs, it's not possible for you to have crude oil losses in the trunk line without you knowing at your terminal that there has been a drop. Nine years is too long for engineers and other experts to know that there is a drop in the line. Let's look at some of the solutions and we see how we are choosing not to nip this in the bud because this is a very big problem. Four billion dollars is equivalent to about two trillion naira. Do you know what two trillion naira can do for the country? But now, only a few number of people are consuming this 2 trillion naira, which is about, let's say, at most, if there are so many people involved, let's say 500 people or 1,000 people are involved. Because the, the money will trickle down. Some people who even benefit from the trickling down of this money will not even know the transactions that have happened. They may not even know what even is the reason for that gift they are receiving. They just take it that, oh, the industry is making some profit and this is your share. 
but they don't know they are being paid for not doing their jobs to the best of their ability. This amount is too large for Nigerians to gloss over it. We need to look deeper at the information available at our disposal. The little available information in the public space is enough to prosecute and jail several people in the industry. All you need to do is to find the people who are involved in the final transactions and then you can follow the paper trail back to the people who sanctioned this. This investigation should not be difficult to conclude. But like I said before, our minds are running kitty kata. Let's look at some of the solutions and look at how valid they are if we actually want to stop oil theft in the Niger Delta. The number one solution, which is basic for all security agencies and an understanding of security tactics, is to have video recordings at terminals. You should have these video recordings 24-7. You should be seeing what's happening at all these terminals from morning till night. Nothing should miss the eyes of the people and the cameras. And you should always have review committee, various committees of independent individuals that cannot be compromised should be able to view these recordings of what's happening at these terminals. That's a job in itself. You are creating jobs for people. And the thing about it is that you don't need to watch the video for 24 hours. If you are going to speed these videos, you'll be able to watch 24 hours within, let's say, 2 hours. It's a job. Your job is just to identify which ship comes in and which ship goes out. This is not rocket science, unless we don't want to solve it. Video recordings at terminals is number one choice for finding out who is at the terminal and who is not at the terminal. Number two is employment of 2,000 military personnel. I say 2,000 because the scale of job you need to do is quite large and also to ensure that you reduce the probability of conflict of interest. Because if you have so many people on the job, people will have different opinion and it may be difficult for them to come together and agree as to what they want to do. You also recommend that you regularly rotate these people, people from different locations are brought together to do a job because you don't know one of these people will be ready to tip off a more internal investigative unit that is not prone to compromise, that is able to tip us off as to things that are happening in the region. It's also recommended that they are paid well. You pay these officers well because once they are paid well, a large number of officers are paid well. You are reducing the likelihood of them involving in this crude oil theft because they are already satisfied with what they have. Number three solution is the purchase of three numbers Black Hawk helicopters, which is worth about $6.5 million. I just put this helicopter here just as an example. When the Navy says that a ship escaped them at Equatorial Guinea, you begin to wonder how fast is a ship and how fast is the Nigerian Navy's helicopter. The fastest ship in the world is about 107 kilometers per hour. This is the world's fastest ship. At 58 knots or 107 kilometers per hour, she leaves all others in her wake. A ship which can only follow the water route and an helicopter which can crisscross different directions and alignments which is three times faster than the fastest ship. Tell me how this ship is going to escape the helicopter. And of course, we know that these crude oil carriers are not going to be the fastest ships in the world. How can these ships be escaping the helicopters of the military? It measures 1,246 feet long by 223 feet wide and has a weight of 234,000 tons. It has a loading capacity of 441,000 tons or 3 million barrels of oil. It's a so I'm suggesting that we purchase three of these helicopters. Sometimes in this country we choose to use old equipment because we feel we can't really afford it. But from the estimates I'll show you here, 
it will be proven that going for this high grade equipment is even more profitable than going for all this low grade equipment and feeling that you cannot equip yourself to combat crude oil theft. Now this is the technical part that has to do with engineering and science and technology. Identifying and locating a drop in the crude oil supply trunk lines. Based on the law of conservation of mass, which is a basic fluid mechanics equation, you are able to know the pressure and the different metrics of fluid flowing inside a pipe. And thankfully, in recent times, you have different equipments like the SCADA and the likes, which does remote monitoring of pressure, temperature, flow speed of fluid inside the trunk lines. And at each terminal or power station or pump station, you are able to take these values and everything is sent to the main coordinating station. This is one way for you to, you can actually isolate where exactly you are having drop in the crude oil along the line. This information or this technology is available unless we are choosing not to use it. Once we have done most of all these things and it's not solved, then we can move further. But these things are the basic that is being used by developed countries in the world. And if you are not even doing what is helping developed countries, then there is no point complaining about oil theft because it has shown you clearly do not want to solve the problem. So you need to identify with technology the various metrics of the crude flowing in the trunk lines. Lastly, placating the different stakeholders in the organized crime. I will say placate because in every society, you have the good and the bad. Everybody cannot be good and definitely everyone cannot be bad. Some people have valid reasons for involving in this criminal theft in the first place. There are some people who may complain they don't have a pension. There are some people who may complain that they don't have jobs. Some people may complain that they don't have resources, enough resources to take care of themselves. But with these solutions, you are able to take care of different stakeholders that are important and the other stakeholders which are not important are left out. So it's sort of like a divide and rule technique because there are people who have no business with oil theft. If you solve the problem of the military officers by paying their men properly and providing them equipment, you reduce the likelihood of them involving in this oil theft. For the militants, recently they have given a contract to a former, would I say, agitator or militant for him to provide security in the Niger Delta. That part or that portion is able to discourage people who are involved in local refining because rather than doing local refining, some of them may be engaged in jobs such as security. If you look at the value that 40,000 barrels per day, which goes to local refining and local theft, is almost equivalent to the amount given to this man that provides local security in the Niger Delta. Most of the people involved in the Niger Delta local refining have this excuse that there is no job in the region, which is why they do what they do. So you are actually going to remove this set of stakeholders. These communities are going to be removed from the stakeholders involved in this organized crime of criminal theft. Both the oil industry politicians and oil traders need no placating because oil traders can always purchase from anywhere so they should be left out the oil industry people working there are already well paid so there is no reason for them to be involved in oil theft then the politicians nigerian politicians are among the highest paid in the world if they maintain their pay what need do they have to continue in the stealing. The main actors in this organized crime, the military, the militants, and the communities have already been placated with these solutions I have provided. This is now a look at the mathematics and the investment and how it relates to cost and benefits for Nigeria. So we look at this 400,000 barrels per day. Let's assume that a barrel 
let's say the revenue or the profits anyhow you want to look at it let's say it's twenty dollars per barrel multiplying it by four hundred thousand barrels you have eight million dollars every day so of these eight million dollars eight hundred thousand dollars goes to the illegal local refining and theft and 7.2 million dollars goes to the illegal export so the solutions which are suggested cost of the solutions per day military personnel assuming you have 2000 persons from the police the army nscdc and the likes you have 200,000 200 persons times 500 dollars per day a total of 1 million dollars every day is going to this personnel so if you look at the local security contract given to a certain agitator which is worth about 48 billion naira some people shout about it but when you do the bird's eye view calculation you see how small the amount is compared to our problem and compared to other metrics you see that this, am this amounts to about $303,000 per day for security in the whole of the Niger Delta looking at the military helicopters per day let's say you're purchasing three and it's worth about 20 million dollars typically those helicopters can last 30 years 35 years 40 years and you need to do maintenance regularly so we say that let's say it's going to last for 30 years and we are doing maintenance and ultimately the maintenance of this airplane within that 30 years period will mean that you spent about 60 million dollars in total that's times three of its actual value and you divide it by 30 years and 365 days it comes down to about five thousand four hundred and eighty dollars per day so this is how much you're actually investing or spending on those helicopters per day which is providing security then you're talking about terminal surveillance per day which is where you have the video and all those kind of um, information and people who are going to watch them to see what's coming in and what's going out so the total cost of these solutions per day is about 1.3 million dollars so the benefits of this security investment will show you that out of the value of the crude oil theft you'll be saving about 84 percent by spending only 16 percent of the crude oil that is being lost so we see here crude oil losses of eight million dollars security investments of about 1.3 million dollars and savings per day is about 6.6 million dollars so we see how it's justifiable to invest in some level of security of which this security is actually reducing the stakeholders that are involved in the organized crime and how it benefits the investment of crude oil in the niger delta so like i said earlier about the stakeholder analysis the people who are important for us to discourage from involving in this criminal theft are the military officers, the militants, the oil industry personnel, and the communities. The politicians and the oil traders have no business dealing with crude oil. I will repeat it. The politicians and the oil traders have no business dealing with crude oil. They do not have any justifiable reason to be involved in criminal theft. We may say the communities have a justifiable reason to involve in criminal theft. We may say some oil industry personnel have a reason to be involved in oil criminal theft. We may say militants have a reason. We may say military officers have a reason. But with those solutions, those reasons no longer exist. But politicians and oil traders should not involve themselves in crude oil theft. These are some solutions of which there are many other solutions which need to be implemented for this criminal theft to stop because because losing four billion dollars equivalent to about two trillion naira is too much that two trillion naira represents about 10 percent of the budget of nigeria for 2023 imagine 10 percent of what is to feed 200 million people only 1000 people are consuming it no that's a shame we need to nip this thing in the pod by acting on these solutions to put an end to crude theft. Thank you for watching this video and listening to the comments. This is catchment of resources where we create for better living.